This is a season to be jolly. <laughs> you know, I could probably get stoned for saying that, meaning somebody throw rocks at me, because there seems to be a real challenge nowadays. It, you know, it's not as though some politically correct person wants to stop Christmas, but it's almost like half the Christians, or some, I should say a real small portion, don't want Christmas, or they want it on their own terms. And You know, it always amazes me how things can get so distorted or contorted from the truth. I know for myself, I used to make a lot of mistakes. And to be blunt, I still do. As a matter of fact, Christmas compared, like Christmas trees compared to the ancient pagan tradition of setting up a tree, cutting it down, making it into an idol, fashioning it into the form of a man, lighting candles on it and trimming it with whatever, is so far removed from a Christmas tree that even now I think, how could I even have thought that at any point in time? I'm glad I never taught that that was a pagan tradition, but that God had spared me from making that blunder. Because, believe me, I have stuck my foot in my mouth lots of times. As a matter of fact, Christmas tree compared to a pagan tradition in Isaiah or, or in the Old Testament is a lot like what I used to think about babies. No, really. See, when I was young, a lot younger than I am now, <laughs> I wasn't told where babies came from. So, shoot, when I finally started to figure it out, you know, I kind of, I kind of got the idea that, you know, babies were like inside the belly, you know, so I kind of went, well, okay, that makes sense, you know, because you could see, you know, how in the belly got bigger and, you know, there had to be a baby in there. So, shoot, I always figured that babies were just, one day, you know, your mother had a big bowel movement and popped out a baby. What did I know? <laughs> I figured it was a big pooper. <laughs> For the longest time, I thought babies came out the rear end. <laughs> I thought that they exited the rear door. What did I know? I was a little kid. <laughs> Fortunately for me, later, I read encyclopedias. Although it wasn't much later, because I was pretty young when I read my first encyclopedia. Then I destroyed a lot of bad ideas I had. Although I still didn't quite have it down. Couldn't quite figure it out. <laughs> it just didn't make any sense. You know, and in my day, you know, fortunately, you know, we were all kind of naive. And they still had just introduced sex education, of all things, into the schools. But I really didn't know. And my parents didn't tell me. You know, I had too many stepdads or whatever. But the point being, I had a wrong idea that without correct information... I thought I knew what I was talking about. Imagine if I went out teaching people that. That's what happens a lot of times when somebody gets a hold of a scripture and they run with it. They, they see something and they're all excited about it, but they don't really test it out to see if it's really true. They don't prove it or approve it by way of examining it in light of historical references or commentaries or other people that maybe even they might be a part of their faith and their traditions and maybe they might know something a little more than that person does but the person gets excited about it so they get their their emotions wrapped up into it and then they just won't let go of it because it's like they fattened it out they think they're the only ones that know so suddenly they're all gaga about this one idea As a matter of fact show you how dumb I could be. <laughs> and you thought babies was dumb. I used to run around teaching everyone that, you know, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man 
hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and sup with him and he with me. Because, you know, I had that little heart picture, you know, and I'd, I'd point at it and say, you know, this is Jesus and this is your heart and Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart and he wants to come in and he wants to sup with you. And that, that's my gospel message for salvation. Except for one thing. It was written to Christians. One day, some guy came up to me and told me that. He kind of made fun of me of it, treated me like I was kind of, kind of naive, Jesus freak, which I was. <laughs> and I stopped, thought about it, realized that inside my discernment told me he was right and I was wrong. And I went, this is humiliating. This is embarrassing. So that night I got mad at God, got furious at God and decided I'd never witness again because I'd been deceived. Fine. <laughs> so that lasted for a while, maybe six months, I don't know. But I was mad. As a matter of fact, I went way over the top on that one. I was so mad that I went after God and God honored my prayer because I was adamant about it. I went out in the parking lots and I would yell and scream and stomp around in the middle of the night, you know, in the dark. and yell at God, you know, like, imagine this, a street light, you know, hanging down, and the only light you see is one parking lot, and there's this little guy running around yelling at God about, you lied to me, you told me that this was, and I was, you know, and I thought I was doing the right thing, and here I go, make a fool of myself, I'm never going to do that again, I'm never going to serve you, I don't want to do this, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I should have been locked up, <laughs> either by a Christian, or by the police, it doesn't matter which, <laughs> or by mental, you know, health, counselors or whatever. But that went on a long time. I was bad. Oh, I didn't want to ever be embarrassed again. <laughs> well, God chose to embarrass me more because at that point in time, I had told God that I want to know before I go. And I want to have the knowledge before I share, you know, make a fool of myself. Well, God took me way down that road, and it's kind of like a Solomon journey. And it's not all that it's cracked up to be. When you do know the truth, it doesn't mean everybody's going to buy into it. <laughs> and there's a price to pay for it, too. But praise the Lord. The cost for me was worth the journey. And it took a lot. I learned a lot along the way, and I wouldn't want to be, again, in the same position and make the same statements, but it taught me that people can get so carried away in one thing, they forget everything else. Their narrow-minded focus isn't on the narrow way, but they become narrow-minded and not listening to what God may say. So they can't hear, they can't see, they don't understand with their heart what God is trying to reveal in the big picture. And that's what you need to do. Is you need to always understand that it's Genesis through Revelation, all of it contained in a perfect unveiling or a perfect revelation of himself, as opposed to just being taking a piece out. So when a person tries to come to you about Christmas or who knows, maybe about babies being born like poop. <laughs> and just kind of laugh at them and say, oh, that's dumb. Don't even bother with it. You know, that's silly. It's not even valid. There's no scriptural basis for somebody to come to you and tell you, oh, you can't have a Christmas tree. You're worshiping it by decorating it. <laughs> so you don't decorate your face. <laughs> you don't decorate your house. You don't decorate uh, your car. I mean, come on now. Let's get real. I mean, your car might be an idol. <laughs> That's more likely. <laughs> or your football star, but a Christmas tree? So, if it's your idol, then how come you tear it down, throw it away, and don't deal with it for nine months or ten months out of the year? Wouldn't be much of an idol if that's what was going on. I mean, come on. What, what is it, like a, a one-month, you know, false pagan worship, and then all of a sudden... You get over it? <laughs> Come on. How silly does that sound? So, if you began to think like I just mentioned, if you started really thinking about what they're saying, 
Do you bow down to it? I mean, come on, let's get real. Do you actually you know, worship and say, oh, tree, oh, tree, speak to me? Do you, <laughs> do you, like I said, when it's gone, are you waiting 10 months for it to reappear? Let's be real. No, of course not. That's silly. It's kind of stupid. You know, I mean, anything technically could be an idol if you put all your energy and all your time and all your love and all your emotions, all your feelings and everything else into it. But we don't do that. Except the sports, do we? <laughs> Our car? Hmm. Maybe there's a few other things we got to look at first before we start calling Christmas trees pagan. <laughs> I mean, really. So don't get carried away by what you read in the Bible. Read it and learn through the years as you walk with God daily. As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Not everyone that saith, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. Holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity, or love. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So you see, if you really want to know Jesus, then you would begin with, add to your faith virtue, and then virtue knowledge. So you. Take those as a stepladder, and I think you're going to find that they are really profitable and productive in your life if you work on them or ask God to put them in you and then cause them to grow. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. So those things that were listed as they are, faith, develop it into virtue, virtue, develop into knowledge, knowledge, develop into temperance, temperance, develop into patience, patience, develop into godliness, godliness, develop into brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, develop love. And then you would never fall. By grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God and not of works, lest any man should boast. So when you do fall, you do have God's grace, whom he looks at you fallen and says, Hey, look, I know you fell. It's okay. Let me pick you up. And then just ask him to forgive you and get up and go again. It's that simple. As children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same that he might deliver them through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Most people, before they're a Christian, fear death when they finally face it in reality. And having faced death, I don't fear it so much as I had before I was a Christian. And now I'm a Christian, I kind of look forward to it. <laughs> it's like, all right, let's get out of here. <laughs> Check out time. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ, for which cause we faint not, but through our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. We know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens, which is our body. Therefore, we are always confident knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. We are willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord, for such is what death is. Once we are absent from the body, we will be present with the Lord. Let not your heart be troubled, ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions, and if it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. In that we know that God is risen from the dead, that God does speak to us, that we can hear God speak, that we do know God has given us his word to prove all things, that we are changed from glory to glory into the image of the incorruptible Son, that God, our Father, does listen and hear us when we speak and when we pray. 
how much more so do we need not fear death than we need enjoy life for what it was meant to be, which was to live with him every day, not as it were our last, but as it is just one more day closer to eternity, forever and ever and ever, forever, with a new body, <laughs> not one subject to all these failings and age lines and kind of whatever it is that you don't like about yourself. Because I'm sure that there's something about this body you're living in you don't like. <laughs> one day you get to check it in and check out a new one. 